Hello and welcome to episode 50 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. In this series, I play 15 minute rapid games with 10 second increment with the main goal of trying to explain my thought process to you, the viewer, while I'm playing so that you can try and learn about how higher rated players think to implement them into your own game and then use the post game analysis to see where the computer thinks I went right and wrong and where my opponent went right and wrong so we can delve a bit deeper into some of the ideas of the game so that I can learn and therefore teach you better. Let's get into the game. All right, we have the white pieces against Ode 54 and I wanna say that's the Syrian flag. Okay, cool, cool. My geography is still on point. And we have E4, E5. So of course we're going to play the Vienna game. And this game will be linked not only to a playlist with all my rapid rating climb uh, episodes but also every video on my channel which features the Vienna game uh, or the Vienna Gambit but basically from this position onwards so if you want to try and learn this opening uh, or if you already know it but want to just learn some more ideas in the opening then I'd recommend checking the playlist out. My opponent goes knight c6 and the main line is knight to f6 we are going to go bishop to c4 this is the Max Lang defense and black has a few moves he can play here knight f6 probably being the main one bishop c5 would be a f i would say a mistake um more than an, an inaccuracy i'd call it a mistake but not quite a blunder because b uh, queen g4 exposes the g7 pawn quite nicely but we don't go into that line we have knight to f6 and here black is threatening to take my pawn on e4 and after knight takes push d5 so I'm going to play d3 so that if black takes I can take back with the pawn and we have full control over the d5 square so there's no forks. My opponent goes bishop c5. This is very accurate play because the idea of the Vienna is that you delay development of the g knight so that you can push the f pawn. The thing is if I try and push the f pawn now this diagonal is really exposed and makes it difficult for my king to castle. Instead, I'm going to play knight g to e2. I'm not sure if this is perfect theory or not. Um, this is quite common. Knight a4 is an idea to go after this bishop, especially because he's now played d6 and he can no longer retreat. So knight a4 is a move that I want to play. If the bishop goes back to b6, we can take it. He'll open the a file, but I'm not worried. My bishop's defending the a-pawn alongside my rook anyway. If knight a4, bishop b5 checks, c3, bishop a5, I can push b4 to force the bishop back to b6 and then take it. And we can claim that we've gained some extra space through the pawn pushes. Um, we do weaken our grip over d5, but we can always transfer this knight over to c3 if need be. And even if he does get d5 in, it won't be the end of the world won't be the end of the world at all. The thing is, I want to castle and push f4, but that's very difficult if this bishop exists. And if my opponent has the time to play a move like a6 or a5 to give his bishop shelter on a7, that bishop's going to be very hard to get rid of unless I play bishop to e3, which I don't really want to do. I don't really fancy it. My opponent might be able to play moves like knight d4 on bishop to e3. So this looks very logical, and I'm going to play it. We're just going to go after this bishop, try and win the bishop pair. And my opponent could try and do a similar thing to me if he goes for a move like knight a5. Maybe not in this exact position, but he could try and do that. Okay, bishop b6. I'm going to take it. Could I have waited? Maybe. But he might have also had bishop a5 check to make my life a bit more difficult. So I might as well snap it off. And knight c3 looks like a good move to me. We do allow this move, this knight to come to d4 though. If I castle, he could push d5, which I don't like. But I also have the move bishop to g5, pinning the knight to the queen and making d5 difficult. However, if I go bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, and then d5, is that a problem? Take, knight takes. 
I don't know. It's difficult to evaluate, but I think the king will struggle to find shelter in that variation. Our king will be nice and safe. e5 is going to be weak, targeted by the bishop as well. I think I like that line. Let's go bishop g5. I'm not sure if this is the best approach or not, but it looks nice. If this knight ever comes to d4, we're just going to snap it off. Okay, let's go. Bishop h4. And the question is whether my opponent pushes g5 or not. He doesn't. Queen e7 is interesting. Because the queen now no longer supports the d5 push. He might be preparing bishop e6 to try and trade bishops off. Because I have a very strong bishop. Knight c3, knight d5 is what I want to play. If knight c3, bishop e6, I think I can go knight d5. And if takes takes, we end up with a bishop pair versus a pair of knights. But with this bishop tucking back to b3 and this bishop being able to go to g3 if need be. And knight to h5 harassing the bishop not existing because of queen the queen controlling the h5 square. I think that should be good for us. Because if I castle here and bishop e6, I'm kind of forced to trade bishops with him, unless I go bishop b5. But then he has nice pressure on a2, and his bishop's also just a good piece. So, yeah, knight c3 looks good to me. I am allowing this knight into d4, I am aware. But if he goes knight d4 here, then knight d5 should be pretty devastating. Should be pretty devastating. So, okay, yeah, bishop e6. If I take this, and queen takes or pawn takes, then knight d5 is no longer very effective. So I think I should play it here. Again, this idea exists for him, but not yet. Let's go. Knight d5. Bishop takes. There's no point taking with the pawn and blocking our own bishop. So let's play bishop takes. We have this pin still going on. My opponent could push g5. Hmm. I didn't notice that during my calculation. So this pin no longer exists. My bishop is under attack, so I can't retreat this bishop. And this bishop is now attacked. Do I take... If I play bishop g3, knight d5... E D5, Knight D4, or Knight B4. Ah, yeah, if I go Bishop G3, Knight D5, E D5, Knight B4, how do I defend everything? I don't know. So I think I should probably take here. I should probably take and then drop the bishop back. This bishop is not great because my opponent's got lots of pawns on dark squares which makes it difficult for my bishop to do anything. But if I can try and break down the structure through pawn breaks, then the bishop could come alive and these pawns could become weaknesses rather than strengths. Okay, that's an interesting move. h5. Well, I'm going to push h4. Because I think that kind of forces g4 out of him. And my bishop, therefore, gains a bit more access to the dark squares, I believe. The move f4 is tempting to me. It's really tempting. Because I'm trying... To, if, if he takes me and bishop takes, my bishop comes alive, right? We can now access these diagonals. We can access this diagonal. These pawns aren't so scary anymore because we remove the e5 pawn. If we go f4 and he takes en passant, then... Queen to f3 defends the bishop to any rook g8 ideas. Castling queen side will put a lot of pressure down the... Sorry, king side will put a lot of pressure down the f-file. And in f, if f4 and he doesn't take either way, and he plays, I don't know, a move like queen side castles, let's say, then we can take on e5. And after pawn takes e5, our bishop can not only access this diagonal, but... The e5 pawn is also quite weak. Because there'll be no d pawn. So this looks good to me. After takes takes, his knight does have access to the g4 square. 
But I don't think that's very dangerous, to be honest. I don't think I'm too worried about it. Um, we do kind of improve the knight by doing this. If the knight goes to g4, but where's the knight going after that? We control all the important squares that the knight is attacking. I think castling kingside makes a lot of sense. Because castling queenside is suicide. Yep, let's put pressure down the f-file. Make it difficult for him to castle, because f7 will hang. And he does have pressure on the h4 pawn, but this is defended. And if the queen ever ventures here, then f7 would be hanging anyway. The bishop's still kind of out of the game, uh, because it's blocked off on this diagonal. f6 is a nice move. That is a nice move. It does block the queen's attack on h4, though. I like the move queen f5, trying to control this so that he can't castle, but that does blunder knight e3, forking the queen and the rook. Got to be careful when there's knights on the board. a3 is a move I'd like to play. Simply just freeing up my rook from defending a2. So I can maybe shift it over to e1 to control e3. And then I can play queen to f5. That looks fine to me. There's also ideas of c3 and d4 to try and break apart the dark squares. But this pawn is supported incredibly well. So that's going to be a very long term plan. I like the move a3. I'm going to play it. And the thing is, I don't know what black is going to do in terms of king safety. Because if the king goes queenside, a4, a5 doesn't look great for me. Well, doesn't look great for him. Doesn't look great to me for him, if you get what I mean. And castling kingside also doesn't look good because of the weakness of the h5 pawn. And the fact that my queen can just sneak in like this. So I think I want to put a bit of pressure on. I don't see what c5 does. It clamps down on d4, I suppose. Just trying to lock my bishop out. But... Okay. We don't just have to play with the bishop. We have plenty of other pieces. And c3, d4 might be more effective with this pawn on c5. b4 is also potentially an idea in the future to try and cause some chaos on the queen side. Okay, I don't mind this position. His knight is very good, like I said, but I feel like we have a nice bit of activity. Our king is definitely safer than his. Castling queen side, mm, I don't believe in. I really don't believe in that. h5 is weak. h4 is weak, but it's well defended. Wow. Queen f5, does he want queen e6? I don't think those endgames favour me. If we trade like this, I think my bishop's just bad. I think one of the advantages we have in this position is his lack of king safety. And we need to keep queens on the board to be able to exploit that. Is he trying to swing his rook over? Dunno. Maybe. I think c3 is a logical move. We can play this move at any time. I want to prepare ideas of d4 and b4. Because the king has a nice little hidey hole amongst these pawns at the moment. But if we can try and break those apart, this bishop could come alive. And cause some problems for my opponent. I think if this bishop comes alive, we probably win this game. But for now, his knight is definitely better than my bishop. So he's doing well as a result of that. Hmm. This isn't bad. This is not bad. We reserve the right to play queen f5 at any time. I wouldn't be surprised if the king tries to tuck himself on c6. Maybe rook 
A to E1 wasn't the best idea. Maybe the rook should have stayed on the queen side. But time isn't particularly a problem here because there's nothing really fast happening. The, the pawns are quite locked. Like, it's quite a locked pawn structure. Um, my opponent's position is defended well, so I'm not crashing through anytime soon. And same with him, he's not crashing into my position anytime soon. Even if he tries to double rooks on the G file, I'll have moves like Queen F5, Queen H5 potentially. Or just playing moves like Rook E2 to defend G2 and dropping this Bishop back. Which might be a good idea, playing Rook E2 and Bishop E1 to try and get the Bishop back into the game. Okay, Rook F8 defends the F-pawn. He's not threatening to push ever, because we can just take with the pawn. That's not a problem. Do we want to play d4? That's the question. That is a question. Do we want to play it? Take, take, take. We will be sacrificing a pawn if we do that. But then maybe we can swing the queen over. I don't like giving up a pawn though, because if a, if a black pawn lands on d4, then he'll also have good control over e3 to put a knight there. b4 might be better. And if takes... Taking with the c pawn actually looks good to try and utilize the c file. I think I actually want to start with rook e2 though. Reason being, my opponent doesn't really have threats. I want to give this bishop the e1 square to drop back to. I also want to just defend g2 if need be. And with a rook on the second rank and a rook on the first rank, say the c-file opens up like this, then I can swing the rooks to c2 and c1 far easier because they're already on different ranks instead of having to lift one and then swing it over. So, okay, queen to e6... He's not threatening anything. He's looking at some weak light squares maybe, but not worried. If we go b4, can he go queen b3? Dunno. c4 I think kills the game off. And the more locked the position gets, the better his knight becomes. Because it's knight versus bishop. Bishops favour open boards, obviously. Because if these pawns were stripped away, for example, my bishop would be far better than his knight. So I want to trade pawns. b4. If queen b3, take. Mm, but if the queen ever ventures in, I do have queen f5. So, and I could maybe make him trade up my terms to get a very active rook. b4, a3 is weak. So if he plays a move like rook to a8, is that a problem? I don't know, it does open the board up for me though. And I could always play rook a1. Maybe he's trying to support an f5 push by moving his queen to e6. Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. I don't see any other idea than b4 because d4 doesn't work. We could go king h1 and try and tuck the bishop on g1 to support d4. But that's a very slow plan and h4 might become weak. Maybe he's trying to get rid of this this uh, fork by playing queen e6. Okay, what about what about just rook d2? Actually, because this isn't a threat. What if we go rook d2 and try and push d4? B4 still on the cards. 
If he goes for queen b3, that's not a problem. Yeah, I like this move. Rook d2. The reason I took so long in that position is because I wanted to make sure that I was playing the right idea because it felt like a critical moment. Okay, he plays king c8 quite quickly. Gets the king off of the same file as the rook. This looks like a good move. If everything gets traded, that should benefit us. Even though you can claim that e4 is weak. e4 actually looks good here though. Because he can't swing a rook over. If b4, queen b3... That's still annoying. You could always consider queen d1 to try and come in like this as well. We can do that at any point. You could also consider a4, a5. Mm, but we don't want to allow f5, so we should try and keep my queen and rook looking at f5 for now. Let's go d4. I think we need to try and break through the position. We need to activate my bishop. If, um, you know, pawns get exchanged here, this knight might end up on e5. But again, I'm not too worried about the squares that it has access to. It's a good knight, don't get me wrong. But I don't think it's game over, good knight. Because our bishop will come alive. And we can always take the knight with the bishop if the knight does end up on e5. Whereas it's far more difficult for the knight to harass my bishop geometrically. Because if the knight ends up on e5, we have the classic, like, three, like, one diagonal square between the knight and bishop. Which means the knight needs, like, three moves to actually target the bishop. Uh... I mean, same goes for any piece, obviously, but it's just a geometric pattern with the knight. Like, if a knight's here, and the square the knight wants to access is has, like, one diagonal square between the knight and the square it wants to go to, it takes a very long time. I mean, it takes one, two, three, four moves to go there. So, it's just a pattern that's very good to know. So, basically, without thinking too hard... I know that if this knight ends up on e5, it's going to really struggle to put pressure on my bishop. Because it's going to take several moves, just geometrically. Good pattern to realise. My opponent's taking some time in this position, probably a good idea. Because this is tough. I'm not sure whether a4 was good. Um, but I thought if like a4, a5, maybe he can just push. I don't know. We can do this at any point though. I also like the move d4 because I have the option of queen d3 or queen to e2 to try and access this light square diagonal, whether I go to b5 or a6, to harass the king. I felt like the king was actually safer on d7. Okay, interesting. So, this isn't so much for threat anymore, which is good. Do we take... I don't want to take here. I mean, he can't play knight takes, I don't think. Because we take here. But if he takes with the f pawn, that's good for him. So, I don't want to allow that. d5, again, I completely lock the structure down. That can't be good for me. If I go b4, he might play c4 and try and lock it down. What if I go a4, a5? Well, then he would take, and then e4 would be exposed. So let's take on c5, while we have the opportunity. Takes back with the c pawn? So our a pawn is now a passed pawn. Rook d5 is a nice move. Potentially. Just trying to cut the queen off so that I can play queen d3 without c4 being played. So if I go queen d3 now, then probably c4. Well, that does open up this diagonal. And we can always try and dislodge the pawn with b3. 
and we could try and put a rook on f5 maybe i don't know it's interesting there's a lot going on in this position i was expecting d takes c5 if we go b4 then c4 Yeah, but then we have rook d5, and we have ideas of queen e2 going after the pawn. If b4 and he takes, that just looks horrible for him. So b4, c4, rook d5. If he goes c6 to kick the rook out, then we have rook a5, and that looks fantastic. b4 looks good. I think it's well-timed. I think it's well-timed. I don't think this was a good move. I think he should have taken with a D pawn for sure. But who knows which which um, course of action was better. I guess we'll see in the post game analysis. So make sure you stick around for that because it will kind of enlighten us on a lot of the correct approaches in these tense positions. And we've had a few of them this game. I'm down to 1 minute 58 so I need to speed up a little bit. But I'm happy with this position. We're locking down our opponent's pawn breaks very well. We have pressure on f6. Our king is lovely and safe. My opponent goes queen c4. Interesting. Very interesting. I like the move rook d5. Because I want to take this pawn, but I don't want him to take with the queen. And c6 can be met with rook d6. Everything's defended. We also have queen f5 check if we want it. Rook d5 looks nice though. The queen's also kind of stranded there. Although there's no real good way for me to attack her. I feel like all of his pieces, apart from the queen, are kind of out of the game. Because where can they go? And we're controlling the pawn break. Well, and this one by putting a rook there, right? I hope we're not blundering anything. I need to keep an eye on knight e3 at all times because it could cause some issues. Ah, so he takes. Which pawn should we take with? Mm, I don't know. I feel like the c pawn makes more sense. Although he does have access to c2 if we take with the c pawn. If we take with the a pawn, we get the a file. I'm going to take with the a pawn. It might have been better to go with the c pawn, but I like the way that we're restricting his queen by keeping the c pawn on the board. Our rook is still really nice. If he goes c6, we can just take d6. Okay, king b7, good move. Our opponent's playing well. B5 looks nice. Just controlling some important squares. Also, maybe we're threatening B6 at some point. To try and undermine E6. Sorry, D6. I want to swing this rook at some point, I think. If we go b6 and he takes with the king, then maybe rook b1. And he's got some problems. Our rook on d5 is also cutting the queen's retreat off, which could be good. And if he goes like this, then we take here. And um, he's got some problems. But we could go... We could go for rook b1 straight away and then push. Although then we get the same idea anyway, so there's no point. He might bring a rook to a8 or b8. That could be a good idea. We're also controlling queen c5 check, which could be useful. This is nice. I really like this position. It's not easy to break through, and we're low on time. My opponent's defending well, but it seems like we're restricting him 
incredibly well just with the way my pieces are configured we're restricting a lot of his play what we need to try and do though is get this bishop into the game this is um our worst piece currently if i could put the bishop on f2 that'd be great but then he's going to take it and i don't think i want to do that because this knight isn't really doing that much you can claim it's controlling my queen's movement because my queen needs to look at e3 at all times but it's also blocking the g file which is kind of good for me because it makes attacking for him a bit harder i like the move b5 i really do we're controlling c6 well queen c6 or pawn c6 and b6 is on the cards okay he pushes f5 so if you take with the queen then knight to e3 forks everything if we take with the pawn e4 that's a nice move wow that's a really nice move oh my I don't know whether this is a good response. We might just be going down a pawn here. That's very nice from my opponent. Great find. I put the bishop on f2 to control e3. Yeah, I guess this knight e3 idea has come back to bite me. If he takes, I need to keep an eye on the rook. So, probably queen d1. Pawn e3 is... Kind of scary though. I also had queen f7, but I think he can just play rook f8. Pawn e3, what do we do? Because he's also threatening pawn e2. Not good. Not good. Could play queen f3. And if he takes. Ah it comes with check. So I don't have discoveries with the rook. Like this. That was my idea. Very nice find from my opponent. And he plays it. Uh, not good. Not good. Not good. I think I'm losing. You can probably just do this even. Oh, ruined it. Oh god, we had such a good position. We had such a nice position. There had to have been a win. There must have been, but nah, I've just thrown the game away. Maybe b5 wasn't the right idea. I think he has e4 though. And our queen's under attack unfortunately. I was relying on these tactics but it doesn't work. Ugh, frustrating. Very frustrating. Maybe he'll blunder something like this. We can hope. But if he moves his queen he's just up a piece. Well sorry, up a rook even. And he's got a past e-pawn. You can give a check if he pushes. I'm just trying to break apart his king's his uh, queen side. Something like this, this, to go after b6 and look at his second rank. Gives us some opportunities. Because I guess we can claim we do have some chances here. Very, very slim though. This might be winning for him. So I don't know how we continue defending the rook without trading queens. For rook f8. 
we have no checks. Maybe, ah, I was thinking queen a2, queen a7, but queen d4 comes with check. Very frustrating. I think he finds this. I think he'll find it. Because we don't actually have an immediate threat. It might have been better to play rook a4 here. To go after a7. And if e3, then queen f3. Yeah, he finds it. Ah, uh, yeah, rook a4 was definitely a better idea. Do we have anything? I don't think so. I guess we can try this, but he can just take here with check. And um, we're down far too much material. Very annoying. We, I feel like we must have had a winning position or a better position at some point. But I just couldn't seem to convert it yeah it's game over i'll try to see if he blunders anything but king b8 here we have a check i guess here should end the game probably let's threaten checkmate <laughs> just in case he wants to blunder it might as well try. But yeah, I, I, I don't see him <laughs> allowing anything here. He's got way too much time on the clock. He definitely used his time better than we did. I mean, I'm ne I never use my time perfectly in these games because my primary focus is to talk you through my thought process while I'm playing moves, which takes way longer. It, it means I take way longer to play than I otherwise would because I'm trying to explain my thoughts instead of just playing the move. Um, but that's fine, because this is the point of the series. It's far better that I lose and like you guys get better educated than I win and I just sit here in silence, because that's not educational. It's an interesting move. Here, here. It feels like he's just giving me more chances to draw. It seems like he's playing this really strangely. Looking at this check. This should probably be winning for him. I don't, I'm sure there was an easier way for him to go about this, but... I guess he's up so much material, it doesn't matter all that much. Seems odd. Like, in this position, I kind of just thought he'd play c6. Or, I mean, back here even. After this check, uh, king b8 and I had nothing. So... I don't know, he's played this a bit strangely, but who am I to question it when I'm completely losing, right? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Oh, by the way, if you made it this far in the video and you have been learning and enjoying, then I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe if you haven't already. I know I haven't really delivered in terms of winning, but can't make it happen every game, unfortunately. Here, here. I'm not actually mated yet. So I'll make him work for it just in case we can pull off some insane perpetual or he blunders something stupid. Might as well. This would threaten mating 1, but it would allow queen c7. 
King e6, Queen c4 would pick up the rook. He'd still be completely losing, but make it a bit harder for him. I don't know, he's taking an awful long time in these positions. Gives this check, okay. Is he going to do this? Maybe? I don't know. I just feel like he's making this difficult for himself. By putting his king in the center. Like, he's got pawns surrounding and all that. Well, that's a nice move. He's covering basically everything. Queen A1 would allow this check to force a trade. We'll look at these avenues, I suppose, to try and give him some checks. I'm just hoping he does something stupid, really. Even if we give this check, though, Queen E5 would check me and force a trade. So, okay. Rook F4 looks good, defending, attacking. Yeah, if we do this, then he does that. Nah, this is game over. I'm going to resign here. There's nothing left in this game. Oh, my opponent could have been rated anything as well, because he's barely played. I want to have a quick look at his account to see... Um, He's played three games. He's won all three. But I don't think he's cheating. I mean, he joined yesterday. I'm just going to... I'm going to pause the video and I'm just going to check um, to see if he's suspicious or not. Just in case. Just in case. Because it wouldn't be unheard of on this channel, right? Okay, I've done a bit of digging into his account. Um, so like I said, he's only played a few games. Um, but I don't think it's anything suspicious at all. Um, he's playing very human-looking moves. And he did make mistakes as well. Um, I think he's just severely underrated because it's a new account. Um, I think he played incredibly well that game. But let's check the game analysis. So e4, e5, knight c3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6 b3 bishop c5 here apparently knight g to e2 is a mistake because of knight g4 going after f2 and if i castled in queen h4 i guess and i'm in big trouble so okay he missed this um better was knight f3 which stops queen h4 because the knight would be controlling that square so that's the line I should have gone for, which is no longer really a Vienna, because we can get a completely symmetrical position like this, and it just looks like an Italian. So I don't, I wouldn't really want to play knight f3. I'd probably play h3, which is the second best move, just because I don't want a symmetrical position. And then I can go knight g to e2, I assume. Slightly worse, but okay. I could also play a3 to give my bishop some breathing room. I could also now go for the idea of knight a4. So okay, that's good to know. He misses with d6, because like I said, he should have gone knight g4, but okay. Knight a4, we take the bishop. Bishop g5, h6, bishop h4. My opponent could have gone knight a5, apparently. Something like this. But this wouldn't be too bad for me. This wouldn't be too bad. Uh, g5 here is also playable. Apparently is the best move. But he goes queen e7. I go knight c3, bishop e6, and knight d5. But the problem is I missed the move g5. If g5 isn't playable, let's say my opponent just castles here. Then I would have been happier with my position after a move like a3. And I know the computer says that he can go for this. 
Oh, wait, no, maybe it's better to go bishop b3. And after this, he does have knight d4, but I can try and break apart his king side. It looks a bit dubious. Um, but yeah, I just missed this idea, really. I have to take on c6. Pawn takes bishop g3. h5, h4, g4. f4 is a mistake. I thought it was quite a good move. Apparently, I just need to be patient. Castle, play moves like b3, a4. Try and expand a bit, and then we can maybe push in the future. So maybe this was a bit premature. He goes for the best line. Now, taking here is bad, because my bishop really comes alive. So he goes for the best line. Knight g4, we castle. It's basically equal. f6. Okay, I should have gone a4, apparently. But okay, we go a3, c5. Rook e1, king d7. Rook e2, queen e6. Yeah, it's basically just equal. Bishop e1 is a move, which I was considering, but I didn't like the fact that it blocked this rook off from rotating. Queen e2, king c8. d4 is an inaccuracy, because it allows queen c4. And somehow the queen is just okay. Which is surprising. He goes rook e8, d5 is the best move, but here I basically just admit that it's a draw, which might have been the best idea. Queen d3 looking here, king b7 covering. I don't really have any attacking opportunities, and nor does he, to be fair, but... Okay, I took... And taking back with the b-pawn was bad, yeah. So taking back with the d-pawn was definitely better. Because you open the opportunity to trade down on the d-file. And it's harder for me to access the queen side to go for an attack. B takes was not good. I go b4, which is the best move. And queen c4 was really the only move to hang on in this position. If you take, then c takes. The c-file opens up. And also my a-pawn starts running. And my b-pawn starts running. Now it's just bad. So queen c4 was a really good find. Rook d5 was actually not a good move. Rook b1 was better. Just trying to push. But it's kind of equal. Rook b1 is the only move that maintains a slight advantage, apparently. After something like rook b1, let's say rook hg8 just for the sake of it. Then the idea is to take. Queen takes, king moves. Oh, not there. No, this is the only winning move. Take. Check. Then take. And his king's just really exposed, I guess. Because I have access to this diagonal. So rook d5 was not good. C takes. It's better to take with the c pawn. Wow. So I was low on time. I made a bit of a split second decision. I thought taking here wasn't great. Because I didn't see what the plan was. The computer has now changed its mind and said it's equal. Again, this f5 idea, I... Wait, can I not just take? Okay, the computer just wants to give up a pawn for whatever reason. To open the f-file, maybe. Interesting, but... We go like this, king b7 is a good move. It was a very nice find. b5, so that is a mistake. And b5 is only... Yeah, no, it's just a bad move. I mean, I explained why I did it to control these squares. Prepare b6 to undermine d6. Apparently, I needed to play rook d2. So then these f5 ideas don't work to try and expose the positioning of the rook. Rook a5 is also good. Mm, yeah, I maybe should have seen that. And if rook a8... Can just double up even. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I I really should have gone for this line. Apparently, I'm still worse after everything gets traded. I guess this knight's just better than my bishop, and my king is quite exposed. Yeah, my king is just really exposed. Queen f1 is the best move. If you take on e4, queen a6, king b8, queen b5. Queen b7, check.
and I'll just give this check. No, queen a6, and I run out of checks, and I'm getting back rank mated. Unless I trade, in which case I just have a worse end game. So, yep, yeah, I go b5, which is a mistake. f5, bishop f2 is an inaccuracy. I did not know what to do. Apparently, queen d3 is playable. And after takes, takes, takes. I mean, I'm still losing, but I can try and hold on. Realistically, this knight is far too powerful, and it's just so much better than my bishop. I go bishop f2 to try and control this square, but it's just game over. <laughs> There's also queen f1, king f1, knight h2 check, which is hilarious. Nice tactic. But yeah, fe4, queen d1, e3, and it's just game over. I try to set up some tactics here, but they don't work because of... I mean, if e4 isn't a move, then I'm a little bit better. Because say d5... What? Okay, let's say... What? Let's go, let's go king b6 even. Then we're just completely winning. d5 takes... Knight h3? Wait, I don't understand. Oh, then e4, and then the rook can be captured. Because this pawn is no longer pinned. And it's queen versus two rooks. Slightly favourable for me, I guess, because his king is quite exposed. But that's what I went for. The problem is that e4 exists, which attacks my queen. So if I take, then he takes. I keep the queens on the board. I try to create some chances. I think rook a4 was better. But he does just have rook a8, and we have nothing. b6, I try. And he's very accurate here. If he takes, maybe I have ideas of queen f7. If king c6, I have rook c4. So I'm setting some traps. But he can just retreat the queen. Check here. Check. He controls rook a4. I have nothing, but that was my idea. Rook f8 though, and I can't maintain defense of this rook without trading the queens after queen to d2. So I tried to create some counterplay, but yeah, it's just game over. My opponent handles it in a strange way. I mean, I'm not criticizing him because it was completely winning, but I don't understand why he didn't just do this. And this. And if I take on e4, I'm probably getting mated. Um... Yeah, that's just the way chess goes sometimes. Frustrating, for sure, because I felt like I had a nice position, and I definitely did have a nice position back here. Here I was really putting some pressure on, and I found a nice way through, but my opponent was accurate, found some really good moves. I wasn't so accurate, and yeah, he capitalized very well, finding f5, really good move. Fair play, and um, we go back below 2,000, unfortunately, but hopefully we can continue the climb to 2,100. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it was very educational because, of course, that's the goal, and I will see you in the next one.